In this video, we're going to be going through some advice from myself and from the community for new and returning players in RuneScape for 2024. Last year was probably one of the most massive changes in RuneScape since EOC came out, and so there's a lot to actually go over and a lot to take in on board for new and returning players to this game. So if you are someone who's looking to either start or to get into RuneScape in 2024, hopefully this video will help you out. We're gonna go through my suggested tip and then also we're gonna go through the suggested tips and advice from the community as well that I put on a YouTube community post, which you'll be able to see on screen right now. And also, of course, if you are a new or returning player, I have a ton of content for you guys on helping you learn this massive, vast game. So just click the subscribe button and check out those videos as well. Otherwise, let's go. So I asked the community, what tips or pieces of advice would you suggest for new and returning players to RuneScape in 2024? And I said, comment them below and I will choose the best to be in the video. So those are what we're going to go through, but I'm going to start off with the little bit of advice that I would have for you guys myself. In 2023, Necromancy was released into RuneScape as its fourth combat style. However, it wasn't just thrown into the game as like something super similar to the other styles and then changed animations or anything. It is designed completely different from the other combat styles, taking into account everything that the J mods have learned from 2012 when EOC was released all the way up to today's date. The way that necromancy actually fits into the game is a hell of a lot more beginner friendly and user friendly and is definitely something that i would recommend most beginners and also any returning players that have played for a long term in the past as well to actually get into if you haven't taken on board necromancy yet as a returning player absolutely check it out pretty much straight away and i would suggest for a newer player as well once you've kind of got any sort of bearings with the game if you're looking to do combat at all you should probably start with that now there's one little issue with this and that is that the game doesn't really take you to necromancy unless you know where to get started so that's a little bit unfortunate however the easiest way to get started would be in your quest log to actually start the quest necromancy you'll be able to go here and set this as your active point and it will take you towards it that being said to actually get to this location you will need to go to the drain or lodestone and then walk a little bit north until you get like a you get you get some lines that lead from the ground to where the necromancy quest starts and then you can go from there as of making the video necromancy is by far the strongest combat style in the game but it is also the most easily accessible combat style as well you're going to be able to get some of the end game gear eventually along your journey uh, without having to go for like ridiculously long grinds for gold in the game you will craft it from start to end so it will teach you all about crafting gear and upgrading gear and it's going to teach you all the ins and outs as well it also helps to start off from the beginning and have very few abilities and then unlock them along the way so you completely know where you are along that combat path as the other combat styles in this game like i said are quite old from 2012 and they a little bit a little bit cluttered and, and overwhelming for a new player so taking advantage of the necromancy release as a new player is absolutely really important and i would suggest it as it, it should be part of the tutorial it isn't yet hopefully it does get changed at some point this year but it definitely should be something you guys take on board very early on follow the quest lines all the way through make sure you focus on this is your combat thing you can train it however you want through slayer through the rituals whatever you want to do with it and then eventually you'll end up with a great pathway into the end game content in terms of pvm and fighting other bosses and all that sort of stuff all right so that's my piece of advice and then we're going to move on to the other stuff from the other players matthew says do quests and achievement diaries there are a lot of great bonuses and rewards for example, faster cannibal making from Mauritania Legs 3 when equipped using the furnace in Port Fasmis, uh, curses from Temple of Sentiston, and stacking overloads after the fourth room free quest line. Now, for a lot of new players, you're probably going to be thinking, what on earth with all those words? It's going to be confusing. But this game is, is, is so much stuff in this game, you're going to you're going to notice it very quickly. But basically, what this person is saying is focus on quests, and then also for each area, you will have an achievement section for like the, the different towns, and basically consider it as like a completionist sort of section for different areas in the game you'll be able to go through and do the different achievements and then as you do that you'll get different bonuses as well in terms of items or other effects while you're in the area some of them are definitely better than others but you should absolutely focus on quests and such to unlock certain parts of the game but also quests will teach you a lot of the game too but they'll also progress your account quite quickly and you're also going to get experience as rewards from doing quests as well so don't neglect the quests; they will be a big part of your progress through the game next comment comes from papery rope okay and they say if you're going to get into the pvm grind don't expect to hit drop rates for items you're going to go dry and it's going to test you so at the very least of it uh, make it fun for yourself also best in slot which is best is best in slot not a requirement for bossing fun over gp or xp it's a game at the end of the day 
So there's a couple of things in here. Basically, this person's saying for anyone more along the lines of returning to the game, I suppose in the immediate effect, if you're going to get back into PVM, obviously you're going to you're going to go dry for a while. Sometimes you're going to get really lucky in some places. You're going to get dry in others. Uh, it is what it is. But uh, just focus on like switching it up and making it fun for yourself. And also, there's this big thing around the game as well that you need best in slot to be able to actually get into some of the end game content. Not the ultimate end game content, like where you probably do want to have some of the top gear but don't get caught up on i have to have absolutely the best things in the game to actually start bossing you can do some of the low level bosses with the low level gear and consider the fact that this boss came out when we didn't have the best in slot gear because it released and gave everybody that so you could have beaten it in the past anyway so don't get caught up on the best in slot gear and don't let it stop you from trying out new content give things a go if you die a few times it doesn't matter because if you are a returning player uh, death costs have, have been rebalanced They're like a while ago now quite a while ago so if you're a returning player from a long time then you won't know this but uh, death costs are super cheap now and the, the punishment for actually dying is very very low now but also of course don't forget it's still a game it's very easy in runescape to get caught up in i have to make sure i'm efficient with this and i have to make sure i'm efficient with that just just focus on the, the things you want to do this is a massive game you're gonna be playing it for quite a long time Number four comes from Rain, and he says, don't subject yourself to MTX and buying bonds for gear. If you need that extra boost for a piece of gear, then you probably don't actually need it yet. And gear below tier 80 is 100% affordable with minimal bossing when it comes down to needing that new wand or crossbow. Try it, grind it out. You may be surprised with your RNG and get a couple hundred. So basically, um, the main thing to take away from this, I think, is try and enjoy the game for the time it takes like obviously some some people are going to play differently some of you guys are going to be like oh look i can buy a bond from the store and sell that bond for gp this is kind of like the wow token from anybody who's coming from world of warcraft or understands how that sort of works um, and then there's also other microtransactions as well which is what mtx is uh, that, that can kind of boost you through the game it, it's going to be able to allow you to buy experience points all that sort of stuff it's typical for mmos these days i suppose but you should definitely try to avoid that for as long as you can because the game kind of changes a hell of a lot once you boost yourself through that for example if you are a low level player and you buy yourself a couple hundred million gp then when you've used that because it's going to last a hell of a long time for a beginner like it's going to last for the majority of your early game experience you are going to resent making money at that point because money comes pretty slowly for low levels and it kind of feels bad where you're like oh i had 100 200 million gp and now i have to go and make money for two to three to five million gp per hour while that's still good for that kind of level person because you won't need these like 100 200 million gp or gold piece spends having access to it early on can definitely be a put off so try and avoid that for a little while until you are in a place where you're like okay i understand the game now i understand what's going on and it's not going to ruin my experience and focus on it that way but obviously again people play differently so you, you play however you want to but also rain is saying that you should try and access the stuff that you need from playing it in the game for example the wand of crossbow that he mentions try and try and work on it you'll feel like it's more of an accomplishment if you do grab it yourself without like buying it through mtx we're going to interrupt the video really quickly just to remind you guys that over 50 percent of you that watch all the videos still haven't subscribed but also there's gonna be a lot of new players watching this as well and i make a lot of content focused on new players returning players and like lower to mid-level players as well so please do click that sub button but otherwise uh, let's get back to the video next up from the gladiator you say first i'd like to say enjoy the mid game in my opinion it's the most fun and this is absolutely true the, the mid game in runescape and the grind from mid to end game is where the content is it's where the fun is believe me once you hit end game if you if you skip to it immediately and you rush through it and you kind of like uh, avoid all of the other stuff you're gonna get, get to that point and hit a wall pretty quickly because you're like oh well i'm waiting for the next piece of content now so take your time with it focus on it um on however you want to do it and don't worry about rushing through it super quickly unless of course your play style is you just prefer to just blast through content and do it as quick as you possibly can but this is definitely the most fun in the game and don't feel like stressed out or that you're missing out on anything if you are struggling to learn bosses learning pvm and stuff which is a big focus in runescape at the end of the day is something that is going to be your most enjoyable time once you have completed it for example if you finish it and you're like okay i can kill everything in the game now you're gonna think i wish i could go back and learn something new again i wish there was like that point of time that i enjoyed the most of learning the bosses and having something to work towards and, and upgrade my character with the mid game towards the end game is absolutely probably the most enjoyable part upgrading all your stuff progressing your character seeing the levels go up and like unlocking new areas in the game completing the big quests and, and having the pieces of 
gear or unlocks or whatever that you get from it available to yourself for the short term that it's like a, a new shiny thing is definitely something that you are going to want to enjoy during the time next up they say don't go for absurdly long goals it's fine to have one but it's a good way to start to hate the game this is a great piece of advice in the sense of you should probably have like one long-term goal like that you're working towards but then put lots of smaller shorter goals in between yourself and the end goal this way as you achieve all the different pieces of goals and you're like oh i just want to get three quests done today i want to get this done i want to get that done i want to make sure i get this level armor i want to focus on getting all of my skills to level 30 then level 50 then level 70. this is a great way to sort of pace yourself through the game and not feel burnt out and you spread yourself around to all different content you're not just focusing on i want to get level 99 in magic from the start go and then do nothing else you're going to get burnt out pretty quickly and it's going to feel a little bit more stressful probably so set plenty of like midterm and short-term goals as well and then have that one long term in the end and then probably the best piece of advice here is <laughs> void reddit unless you're looking for something specific it's too negative most of the time especially right after new updates yeah the reddit for runescape i think it's pretty similar to many other games to be fair Honestly, I don't think that Jagex can ever win. Uh, Reddit can be useful if you've got a question and you want to put a post up there and ask for a question. Um, but don't get like stressed out with people's responses and stuff. And it, it can be definitely a bit of a put off for a lot of new players or returning players if you've never used it before. So maybe avoid it. Just focus on like the RuneScape wiki or YouTube or join a, like a clan in game, which I think is something we can get to very soon. Number six is from It's Robbie, and they say, which is just what we were talking about, find a clan. It says the 6% avatar XP boost really adds up in the long term. For a new player, you're probably like, what the frick is a 6% avatar XP boost? Well, it is a passive effect that you get from being in a clan that has the avatar, um, so like a higher level clan, and it will give you a bonus experience once you, as long as you're active in the clan a little bit. But it is super helpful. But that being said, being in a clan itself is probably more helpful than just getting the experience boost. Having a clan allows you to ask questions whenever you need. They will offer out different sort of help and advice whenever, like along your way. And you've always got those group of people to help with certain activities in game as well. So you need them. Having somewhere you can just type a question in and having people respond pretty much straight away is always super useful. And they can always help like guide you to places to look for stuff too. Keep in mind though, there's RuneScape Wiki as well, and there's also YouTube and like Discord servers and whatnot, which there will be one for my Discord server linked in the description if you wanna go and join that too, and you can ask questions there whenever you want. Uh, but check out the RuneScape Wiki and whatnot. If you can't find it there, then you just chuck a message in your clan and they will probably be able to help you out. Now don't get me wrong, some clans in the game, you may ask a question and they may be like, what, just, just wiki it bro, what the frick? But like, then you should probably find a new clan, someone who's a little bit more patient for you and tailored around like the newer players. My clan is tends to be pretty full, but if you wanna try and join, then you absolutely welcome, it's called the Inits. Or again, join the Discord that's linked below and then we can figure out how to get you into the clan from there. But having access to that is super helpful. Having players that can help you with act, like different activities, mini games, explaining things to you a little bit differently than how it's written on the wiki, showing you different places. It's just a resource that is way too valuable to pass up on. So how do you actually join a clan? Well, usually people will pop, like scout you out if they're looking to recruit, they'll examine you and see that you're not in the clan and then ask you if you want to join. Or you can ask anybody. If you're not in the clan and you just ask someone, in a, in a crowded area just type the words i'm looking to join a clan that's active or something and happy to help new players then you'll probably get an invite very very likely so give it a go see if you can find some new friends to play the game with it'll boost the enjoyment of the game by a ton and it also offers that valuable resource so this next one has five different things listed so we'll go through them and cover them uh, individually and of course i will try and explain things for a new player as well along the way so, uh, number one, luck modifiers aren't that important, so don't invest in them unless you don't know what to do with your money or you can make them for yourself. So this one is more for returning players probably to begin with. As a newer player, you won't be able to afford these anyway, but luck modifiers uh, basically just boost your RNG very, very, very slightly, like bosses and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. Uh, don't worry about them until later on in the game. Two, start archaeology and invention as soon as possible. These two skills help tremendously with all of his sk uh, skills. Invention, I believe, is a, an elite skill, so you do have to have uh, some other high requirements to use it. But archaeology, definitely get into and check out all of them. But I would honestly just suggest checking out all the skills a little bit and seeing which ones you enjoy so you know what they're all about. And it'll also explain many other things around the game for you as well. Like a lot of the skills are linked together. For example, 
wood cutting is then going to lead into fletching and like fire making and then you've got crafting and you've got all the mining and stuff you turn it into smithing and all this other stuff as well so it all sort of leads into everything else kind of self-explanatory once you start understanding the the basics of like this obviously is going to lead into this Number three is if you do any combat, Slayer or PVM, which is play vs. monster for newer players, Blessing of Het is amazing. 10% extra heals go a long way. So the Blessing of Het is an archaeology uh, bonus that you can get. So if you go through the archaeology skill line, you will eventually get some benefits and some, some buffs to your character. The Blessing of Het is one this person suggests because it will give you 10% extra health every time you use any pieces of food, I believe. Number four says the most important one is to have fun and not fall into the trap of efficiency scape because you cannot win. Only experienced players with multiple accounts are capable of having the knowledge to play in the most efficient way possible. So basically what this person is saying is that RuneScape has been around for a long ass time, right? So the min-maxing is huge in this game. It is absolutely huge. So keep that in mind and just, just do things the way you want to do it. And if you think it's taking too long, then maybe look up a different method then. But if you're enjoying it and you're like, this is fine, then just, just just stick to it it's fine and then number five i think you should have put this at number one to be fair but it's okay you say make friends runescape is much more fun if you have friends to talk to or learn from this next piece of advice comes from colloquials and he says stop saving your gp because you'd like to see a large cash stack the game is all about earning gp and spending it to progress your character sure you can save it if you're working towards something but don't just sit on gp for the sake of it and make do with subpar gear because you like seeing a larger cash stack in your pouch so this is something that a lot of people do and i used to do it in the past as well is you want to have that big massive like coin cash stack in your coin pouch right and it, honestly it's it's very easy to get carried away with i don't want to spend my gp because i want to have one 100 million coins sat in there as like a new or returning player i want to have 500 million coins sat in there and it's like well you know your character isn't actually fully leveled up yet you could spend that gp on progressing your herbal level your combat skills or any skill in the game really or you could buy yourself the next piece of gear that is going to help you progress through like slayer or any sort of training or whatever uh, to actually make it a lot easier on yourself and make your character be in a better position now, the reason that it's bad to just hold gp and then not use it to improve your character is because once you do improve your character once you get to a higher level once you get better gear all that sort of good stuff making money becomes like so much easier like insanely easy in comparison to what it was before someone who's hoarding 500 million gp somehow i don't know how you would have got that at like say like a low level mid level 50s or something you're only gonna be make like one to two million an hour probably depending on what you're doing but if you spend that money, improve your character and get some 99s and like unlock different accesses to different parts of the game, you can push that all the way up to making like 40, 50 million, 60 million GP an hour, depending on what you're actually doing. So rather than stacking up GP and thinking, I need to have more money, focus on improving your character and treat the, the levels of your character and the items that your character has as more value than the actual money. This next tip is something that I think is super useful and it says don't let yourself be overwhelmed by the influx of new content in the game. Instead, take it one step at a time and do what you enjoy the most. The last thing you want is to get burnt out on a game you want to enjoy because you're stuck in analysis paralysis. Try a new thing here, new thing there and stick with what you like. So one of the big issues with RuneScape, especially for new players, is that the game has such massive bloat of content and a lot of the content isn't really all that relevant today. A lot of the stuff can probably be removed from the game and many players wouldn't even bloody notice because no one and, and like engages with it, which is a little bit of a sad reality. However, because of all this, for a brand new player, you kind of feel lost in a world that seems empty in a lot of places. If you are going to be trying to take on runescape and bring it into one of your main games or even a second game or something like that then just keep in mind that you don't have to do every single thing in the game just focus on what you are enjoying in the game and stick with that like if you run into a random thing in the middle of nowhere you don't have to do that it's probably not even relevant to be completely honest and as for new content coming into the game it is a bit different from other mmos in the sense that we do get weekly updates and sometimes there's really nothing in there and sometimes there's a lot of something in there or sometimes there's just little bug fixes here and there and tiny little changes as a new or returning player i wouldn't really worry yourself with that at all 
until you're maybe hitting towards the end game and then you're like okay what can i do new this week so until then don't really worry about it too much if there's anything huge coming into the game you'll definitely hear about it from the players anyway and you can check it out have a little peek at that and see whether you want to do it right now right there uh, otherwise just just keep focusing on what you are enjoying in the game at the time and just stick with that so we're going to end on a nice even 10 tips and this last one is pretty important to cover because it's confusing for a ton of new players and very likely for returning players as well it says for new players buckle up and fix your ui your user interface do a dummy save after like one change so you get how the ui preset systems work and don't end up overwriting your finished setup. I did that once, the pain still lingers. So the user interface in RuneScape is confusing as all hell, but it is also, in my opinion at least, one of the best customizable user interfaces for an MMO that you can get, I suppose. You can literally change anything and how you can make it however you wanna have it, and it is super useful. A lot of people tend to fall on something pretty similar to what like a, like a standard is, but as you move up through the end game, you're going to be adding more things onto it. And you don't have to worry about all that as a brand new player. But it possibly could be worth looking up on YouTube, a new player user interface guide or something like that. In fact, there may not be one specifically for new players. So if there isn't, I will work on one in like a very close video. Maybe like the next few videos, I'll, I'll try and do one for a new player. Uh, but I'll have to like work out what a new player would possibly need and all that sort of stuff and go from there. Work on user interface so it makes sense uh, and just kind of familiarize yourself with it and don't over clutter it don't throw everything on there straight away you'll just add things as you need it along the way would probably be a better way to do it don't let this discourage you and make sure you do safe presets because you don't want to have to spend your time redoing this again and again and again it's it's a pain in the ass there we go there is one tip from myself for necromancy and then nine other tips from the community as well and any new and returning players that are coming to the game welcome and welcome back i suppose i hope that you guys enjoy a lot and if you do have any other questions leave down in the comment and i will reply to them as much as i can but also if you don't get a reply you can join the discord as well which will be linked in the description and you can ask a question in there too or like i said jump in a clan ask questions all that sort of stuff take advantage of the community in the sense of like using it as a resource to answer your questions I have tons of other videos that will help out new and returning players, so check them out too. And other than that, I hope you all enjoy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.